what is up youtube so i got a story to tell y'all hey, i'm gonna talk to y'all about when i got pregnant yes um just giving y'all some of my life experiences because that was one of my biggest life-changing events that I've had in the previous year. So I'm just gonna tell y'all a story. Um, First off, I just wanna tell any mothers, y'all are champs, hang in there, it's a beautiful thing, pregnancy, motherhood, all of that. Um, we were blessed with the gift as women to bear children and I think that you should embrace it to the fullest. All right, enough with that, let me tell y'all about my story. So, um, quick rundown. I'm from New Orleans. I moved to Mississippi after college. I was just not feeling Mississippi. Like, it's cool. I ain't gonna knock it. It's cool. But it's just, it's just slow and I needed opportunity. And I just was trying to just get a move on it. So I moved to Houston. I moved to Houston because I had relatives out there in Texas. So I'm like, cool. Houston, opportunity. Fine. Fine. Anyways, so move to Texas. All right. My ex best friend and I used to link up all the time. I met his father through her. So we were all hanging out. Um, I was just living the Houston life, you know, lavish. No. I was just going out having fun being young. I was what, 23? You know, I was just taking it as it come. And um, yeah, I just was having a ball out there. It just was fun. And then we ended up be, me and his daddy ended up becoming cool. You know, we was real cool. We'd hang out, all of us, you know, chill. I eventually moved in with my ex best friend, sister. And I say X because that's a story for another day. But anyways, <clears throat> son. Anyways, um, yeah, I moved in with her. We would hang out, link up, all of that good stuff. And then, and y'all excuse my dress because I'm just comfortable on here. I just got off. I'm tired. Um, I'm a mama, so I know y'all don't let me leave. But anyways, <laughs> so um. Yeah, we would hang out and stuff. And so 26, 17, a year later, uh, we just would link up and one thing led to another one day and we just hooked up and I got pregnant. So this is where it gets juicy because truth be told, I'm just keeping it real. You could judge me if you want to, but it is what it is. We got a lot of different people out there whatever and the reason why i'm sharing my story because there are some people that may be ashamed or whatever the case may be but i myself did not have a traditional pregnancy yes i would have loved the beautifulness of of a, a beautiful perfect marriage and relationship and me having my child but that's not how it happened for me and although it didn't happen to me like that i am still happy you know i have my child but anyway so that was just a disclaimer for that but yeah i got pregnant we was not in a relationship you know and things happen you know you choose to do some things and you gotta deal with the consequences that comes behind it so yeah and it was such a What's the word I'm looking for? It was very difficult. It was difficult at the time because it was like, it was difficult dealing with the reality of what was going on. And you know what I'm saying? It was like, me and his daddy wasn't in a relationship, you know. Uh, I had just moved to Texas to get established, so I really wasn't just established yet, and like, boom, I'm pregnant, you know what I'm saying? Then, 
uh, it just was so unexpected. It wasn't planned. It just wasn't how I envisioned myself. You know, I envisioned the beautiful, in the perfect world way of getting pregnant and having a baby, but it just wasn't like that. And so that was the hardest part on top of telling my family. Now, that was the extremely challenging part with telling my family because it's like, yes, I was 23. I wasn't a teenager again pregnant, but with my family, it's like they they have a lot of high expectations. I had, because now it's different, but they had a lot of high expectations in me, and they just envision something else kind of what I envision so they were a little disappointed and yes it was very difficult for me because it was like you need your family as a support system you know what I'm saying yeah I got pregnant yeah I know how it had been and it didn't happen traditional and you know the way I envisioned it for myself but it was like I needed that well it's gonna be okay you know, I, and I really didn't get that from them. And, you know, I'm not going to resent them for that or anything like that. Because me and my family are, are still good. But it was just a difficult time, like, dealing with the reality of me being pregnant. And then also, like, the disappointment from my family. Because they were disappointed. But at the end of the day, like, they loved the hell out of me. So it's all love, but it was just like the the expectation part of it all. And I just feel like with my child and future children, if I have any, I would never make them feel like it's the end of the world if they dig happen to go through a situation I did. I do want them want the best. I want them to be financially stable. But I want them to have everything they need to provide for a child because at the end of the day you have to have that foundation set for your child. So yeah, I mean obviously I will want the best for my kids too but I'm not going to put that unnecessary frustration, disappointment and expectations on them because no one's perfect, you know. But anyway, um, yeah, so after that part, time progressed, I was getting bigger, um, you know, I was just really just embracing the fact that, okay, I'm about to have a baby now, you know what I'm saying? And so, over time, my family, they became more excited, they, disappointment grew into excitement, and you know, as time progressed, everything was just getting better, and then on top of that, I was fortunate to have, you know, although me and his, his dad wasn't in a traditional, you know, relationship or whatever, he was very, like, when I tell you this boy did not miss a beat at all, like, he was there every step of the way, you know, through my morning sickness, and, oh my God, morning, I dealt with morning sickness, um, I had really bad toothaches, um, that was pretty much it. I had a smooth pregnancy. Uh, everything, I, I can't even lie. So, okay, let's get into my pregnancy. So, we had a gender reveal. Um, his dad's sisters pretty much took over for that and just did the whole shebang and, um, it was, it was nice. I can't even lie, they did their thing. I appreciate his family a whole lot, but uh, his sister did his thing. We pretty much had like the confetti in the box. It was simple, not all outrageous. Confetti in the box, pull the string. And the thing was, his daddy likes to say, and it may be true that we manifested him because I wanted a boy, he wanted a boy, and we just was like, we having a boy. You know what I'm saying? And we didn't even think of girl man. It was just, we was having a boy, and we came up with his name. We were so excited that we got the boy. We was asking for his stuff. So it was good. Um, now, fast forward to the baby shower. So, 
I didn't have a baby shower. I wanted a baby shower, but I didn't because... When it's too much drama, I'm not gonna let you disturb my peace. So well, the baby shower started to get a little annoying. He had issues on his side of the family today, my, um, his dad, and then my side of the family started getting on my nerves. So, you know, I was just like, you know what, fuck it. We ain't having a baby shower. So I canceled the baby shower. I low-key regret it because I wanted to have a baby shower for my first child. But at the end of the day, you know, it is what it is. You can't go back, you can't change time, whatever. But fast forward to November. Um, I remember all, all my family came in from Mississippi and um, my family linked up and they were playing cards and like I felt like a little feeling and I thought it was my water breaking but it wasn't. I, it was the mucus plug or something. I don't mean to blow all out, but it was the mucus plug. So I'm like, oh my God. It was November 5th. He was due November 5th. And that's when the mucus plug and all that stuff came out. So he didn't come November 5th, which was a Sunday. Um, so I'm like, he's coming. Because on his dad's side, uh, his dad niece actually just had a baby, so they was like, girl, when you having that baby? And she had her baby a few weeks early, I believe. So they was like, when you having that baby? And it's like, I was like, I don't know about my due date the fifth. So when the fifth rolled around, it was like, that's when everything started happening. So I was right on time, but he ended up coming on at six. But anyways, the fifth came, my mucus plug came out on that night. So, on, so we went to the doctor. They was like, you good? You ain't even dilated yet. So I'm like, I ain't dilated yet. So I'm like, dang. So I I ain't even, I wasn't even dilating. So then Monday came. And so I started feeling cramps, like, like menstrual cramps. And um, I was like, uh-oh, like, what's this? Is this contractions? <sighs> I was like, is this contraction? And so, baby, no, no, no. Is this contraction? So I went to the hospital and um, they was like, yeah, you fine. You having slight contractions. They not of minutes apart. And you're only one centimeter dilated. I'm like, what? Okay. So I went back home. So throughout the day, the, con the contractions was getting worse. I was trying to practice this thing called, what is it called? Damn, I forgot what it's called. What is it called? I can't think of it, but I don't have it down when I figure out the name. Anyway, uh, I was practicing this breathing exercise because I was going to do it all natural. I wasn't going to have the epidural. So, my mucus plug came out on the fourth. Because all day on the 5th, I was having contractions. Because it came on the 6th. So all day on the 5th, I was just having contractions. I remember pushing a basket in uh, there's this grocery store in Houston called Joe V's. I was pushing this basket in Joe V's. And like I would stop in the middle of the aisle and just go and breathe. <laughs> and just... Yes, so I was like trying to get through these contractions. I'm like, I'm gonna do this. So we went back by my family. I was getting annoyed and just aggravated because I was cramping and it just was too much going on. So I told his dad, I'm like, let's just go home. I just need a peace of mind. Let me go lay down because I'm hurting and stuff. So we went home um, and we tried to take a nap. The nap didn't happen because I was just con contracting. And so I had like a whole medicine ball or birthing ball, whatever you want to call it. And I'm like getting up every 10, 15 minutes on it, breathing and rocking and stuff. And I'm like, oh, Lord. So around 6 or 7 o'clock that night, I'm like, okay, this shit is getting worse. So like, I'm like, we got to go. 
And he, we had to went to the hospital like three times already. And he like, no, you sure? Get the fuck up and let's go. Cause I need to go. So we go and um, the doctor checked how much dilated I am and I was like, four centimeters dilated. So he was like, you, it, you it's time to come in. So he was like, and everybody got excited. So what else? Try to speak to you in tongues, but you never hit to At this point, it was like, in my head, I'm like, I've been having contractions all day. I'm kind of annoyed with them, so I'm like, I'm just going ahead and do the epidural roll. I gave in. I was just like annoyed with the feeling of the cramps because that's really what it felt like. Some people describe contractions different. To me, they really just felt like strong period cramps. And I feel like if I have a good pregnancy like I did this time again, I'm definitely going to do it natural because I could have done it natural. It was just like I was just over that feeling because it it was painful and maybe it would have gotten worse the more I got dilated, but around four to five centimeters. It was pain, but it was bearable to me. Like, it just felt like really strong period cramps. But, um, so I went ahead, got the epidural, took that like a champ. Um, and it was just a aggravating experience yet again because, bless her heart, if she ever see this video, I had a trainee in there. And I know everybody gotta learn. But it was just like, why did I have to be the test fucking dummy? Like, she had to like stick me three or four times to find my vein, vein to draw my blood. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I can't do this. I'm pregnant. I'm, I'm about to have a baby, and she over here messing up. But um, she, she remained calm. You know what I'm saying? I didn't give her much of an issue because I could have been like, what the, f you know, going off. But and she, she remained calm like that so I got the epidural and then I went to sleep once they put the epidural on me I finally got some rest in around 2 3 in the morning they woke me up and like it's cold But nah, he, um, he did well. Uh, the epidural started to wear off, so when they would tell me to push, I could feel my baby coming down, so I knew when to push. So I was, like, feeling it, but I didn't feel the pain, I guess. Uh, but I guess that's how it feels. I'm not sure. Anyways, um, my mom was on the side of me. He was on the other side, and... I was pushing, the umbilical cord was wrapped around his neck twice, so they was like, stop pushing. I'm like, okay. And so the doctor had to uh, unwrap the, the umbilical cord, and he came. And it was just, it was, it was one of the best experiences I ever had. Like, he was so beautiful to me. His cry was so soft. He sounded like a little cat. And he sounded like a cat for the longest. Up until like four or five months, he would cry and sound like a little cat. He was so, it was just, it was just awesome. Like, I had an excellent pregnancy, I can't even lie. But, um, I, of course, you know, if I wanted to do the holistic birth, uh, you know, pregnancy, I definitely for sure was going to breastfeed. So, I mean, early on, so I'm breastfeeding. And I am still breastfeeding. I know he's getting older because he is 17 months going on too. But, um, yeah. I breastfeed. Yes, it was difficult to all the mothers that are considering breastfeeding. I say, go for it. I am pro breastfeeding. I don't care. Go. Breast is the best. You know what I'm saying? I understand there's so, some women that can't. I know if I can do it, I know you can do it. Go through it, cause let me tell you, child, I went through the engorged stage. I went through the blistered nipples. Yes, my nipples was cracking. 
Yes, and guess what? I still stuck it out like a champ. And then I went through the teeth phase. Yes, he was biting my nipples. Yes, he was. But you know what? I still stuck through because I felt like the benefit of breastfeeding was going to be better at the end of the day. And, you know, everybody's experience isn't the same, you know. But I know my child was made sick only twice that I remember. Because he, he got fever when his teeth were growing in. Yeah, he was a healthy baby. That was another thing. Like, I rarely, I didn't even have to get like a nose free to nothing because it was like, he was good. He had, I think he had a stuffy nose like maybe twice too. Um, if they, if I can remember. But he was very healthy. Um, I'm trying to wean him off. It's so difficult because it's like, I, sh I exclusively breastfed. Like, I did try to pump. But I was reading stuff and getting into all of that. And so I just decided I'm just going to exclusively breastfeed. And then I wasn't working. I was a stay-at-home mom at the time. So I became attached. He became attached. So yeah, it's a little difficult for me to win off. The challenge is so far. Because he's only 17 months. I mean, it's not really any. Well, let me not say that. I'm not going to dumb down. Because there are some women that go, go through postpartum depression. Um, and uh, all, they have a very difficult time during this time of their mo motherhood. But as for me, the challenges so far are just to remain patient through the process. I am pretty patient, but I definitely can do a lot better with patience. And you know, toddlers or babies in general, they are some forgiving creatures you know what I'm saying they forgive you instantly and I definitely gained a lot of patience so some of the challenges are patience um practicing things that you feel are beneficial for your child so breaking generational curses this winning process is very challenging because I have so many opinions like I said, my mom have her input, his daddy have his input, but at the end of the day, you do what you want to do with your child. Yes, it is his dad's child too, but at the end of the day, no, um, it's just a decision you have to make, you know, but, um, I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm extremely extremely I can't stress that enough grateful and blessed blessed like to the third power of blessed like because a lot of people that had a situation like I had especially when I, when I got pregnant and everything didn't have no um it's just a decision you have to make, you know. But um, I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm extremely, I'm just extremely blessed that things happened the way they did. The support system I had, like I said, although my family was a little upset um at the time, they they definitely came through. His dad's side definitely came through. I mean, you know, it was a big support system. And I think that's important, you know, when it comes time. And even if you don't have family or, you know, still embrace the fact that you are blessed with the gifts of bad children. Because there are a lot of women that would love to have kids and they can't, you know. So, it's definitely a beautiful experience, like... Then I get so deep into stuff, but I wouldn't change anything. I wouldn't change it for the world. Like I love that little boy. That I do sometimes want more, but then I think like I want him and me to be like two kids in a pie, and we just do a whole bunch of shit together, and we travel and shit, and it's just me and him and his daddy. But um, you know. I think like that, but you know, who knows what the future holds. Um, but as of now, like, I'm really enjoying motherhood. Like, I love it. I love it. And that 
is it for my story time. I could talk y'all heads off. But I just wanted to share my experience with y'all. You know, some people, if you feel like you're alone when it came down to the non-traditional way of having a baby, you're not. Um, you can overcome it. Um, it was definitely a beautiful experience. It's great. Yeah, that's it. Bye, y'all. I love y'all. Stay tuned. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. And I'll see y'all next time. The next video, we're going to have a mukbang. And we're going to do a new Orleans style. We're going to have crawfish and daiquiri. So stay tuned. We should be having that sometime next week. I probably will post it Saturday. Next Saturday. I don't know yet. But y'all stay tuned. See y'all later.